Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome back to 10 Count. I'm Steve Fall, but on today's edition, I am talking to, I think it's his cat's butt back there, but it's Tristan Archer. How are you doing today? I'm all good. I'm all good. Um, it's it's 3 p.m. in France, so it's middle of the day. Everything is really packed here, so it's been a busy day, but I'm really happy to be here. Well, it's very early in the morning for me. No, I'm up very early because I have three children. So, you know, when the sun is still sleeping, I have risen and I've already done work. But here we are talking about your career because right now you're the current unified champion for Westside Extreme Wrestling, WXW. This is the top promotion in Germany. Like if the WWE is North America top, we're talking WXW Germany. Now, how does it make you feel being the champion of this top brand? Uh, I'm really proud of that. Like, uh, if you have told me three years ago I would have been the champion of WXW, I would not have trust you. Um, it's <laughs> it's a very um, very unique title. Um, it's it, it's not only the biggest promotion in in Germany; it's the biggest promotion in Europe. Wow. Um, they're running shows like three four times a month. Um, they have the biggest rosters. They bring the 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 best guy of the planet in Germany for so many shows. Um, and if you look at the, the former champion, the list is incredible. So I'm really proud uh, being a part of it. Yeah, you think of the past champions, you had Malachi Black, Alistair Black, uh, Tommy Ann. Walter. And then you've had Alexander Wolf, Al Axel Tischer. So there's been a lot of champions people recognize and know. And I want to talk about European wrestling for a second because it seems like for the past, you know, 30 years if I've been watching wrestling, you've had WWE, but then you had like New Japan being the option, I guess, the option of not being in North America. Why do you feel like European wrestling never really transitioned into American fans as the second option? Because New Japan has always been there. European wrestling's always been there, but it seems to be forgotten about when it comes to wrestling fans bringing up uh, secondary options. I don't know. I have no no clue of, of why. Because if you take a look at the product, I mean, WXW, the product is fantastic. I work in, in Canada. I work in the USA. I work in every country in Europe. I've um, never been to, to Japan, but I've been able to work twice for WWE. And if you look at the production, the setup and everything, it's really close to WWE. Right. If you watch, yeah, if you watch the product on the WXW now, it's it looks like WWE um, product. It's really like it's really qu quality. Uh, how to say that? It's really quality. Yeah, the quality. quality. Yeah, yeah, the quality is very good. Um, the wrestler are also very good. Um, we got story storytelling. We we got a we got a, um, a a very good roster. We got very big names. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe it come with times. Yeah. Um, but I know I know sixteen Kara. It's pretty big. I know there is fans from the U.S. flying to to watch the 16 car weekend, uh, from all over Europe. Japanese guys also sometimes. So it's it's 16 car. It's really like the big one. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, I was talking to uh -huh. Asil Tisha about this as well, and we were just bringing it up how it's very interesting that again, like New Japan has always been this, I guess, this foreign option for American fans for years, as in like, oh. I don't watch WWE. I watch New Japan. As in, you know, you, you put your nose up at it. But with European wrestling, it always felt like maybe the style? I don't know what it is. Because I've watched WXW, and I've enjoyed the product. I enjoy the production of it. So it's just completely... I, that's why I wanted to have your opinion on this because as an American fan, as a wrestling fan, you know, I dive into everything I can just to get a little taste of the action across the entire world. But you being unified champion in WXW, I wanted to know your perspective on why these brands are not being transitioned into American audiences more often than not. But maybe as the internet keeps growing, social media, YouTube, all that, maybe the the uh, more eyeballs will be brought on this, especially and, after this interview. And also, it's really funny because at the moment, uh, Gunter Walter is really big uh, in WWE, and like everybody on Twitter is like, oh. Five star matches, five. Star, any he is European wrestling. I mean, if you look at the definition of European wrestling, Walter is European wrestling. Like this is how we wrestle in Europe, and the people in US love this 
kind of wrestling and don't watch European wrestling. It's it's pretty weird. Because if you like the first introduction I had to least European wrestling would be, you know, WCW, Fit Finley, William Regal, David Finley, people like that. And I enjoyed them. But at the same time, if you're comparing them to Sting or Hulk Hogan during that era, it's very hard to it's like comparing apples and oranges where it's like, well, one is very flashy. One is very in your face. One is I'm going to kick the crap out of you. And, and, and that's all I'm going to do. And I guess. I think as time has gone on, that small margin of fan who only like to see the kick the crap out of you has grown because we're sick and tired of watching you cupping your hand and doing this because we realized there's no wrestling involved with that. There's just the sports entertainment value in that and nothing wrong because obviously that was cash and checks left and right. So, you know, no problem there. But I was just thinking, why? Why hasn't it transitioned? Now, what do you think makes WXW stick out from the other companies? Because in you brought it up, it's the biggest company in Europe as well. So there's obviously other companies as in WWE, you have AEW, Impact, NWA here in the States. What about WXW that makes it stick out from the bunch? Hi. I can you can you like ask me this again, but like in a different way? Because I'm French and sometimes I just like Try to understand as much as possible. But this one, I'm sorry. I don't wanna <laughs> like, I don't hey. I don't wanna give a bad answer or hey. like answer some completely different that Don't worry, we don't want to get you in trouble with anybody. Why do you think WXW is the biggest company in Europe? Oh, easy. Easy. Uh first because I'm the champion. No, I'm joking. Of course. Uh, no, for real, uh, they've they've been there for like years and years and years. And like I, like I said, they're running shows like three, four times a month, uh, in front of one thousand, one thousand more people every 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 month. Um, they had a de- like a kind of um, development center with um a very good like practice a gym. Everything is really like clean. Uh, there are more than hundred students. Wow. Um, they really, mm-hmm. they really try to to level up the European wrestling, and bring the new generation into it. Also, like they they all already like build up some very good young talent, like Peter Chihani or Aigle Blanc. Um, and if you look at the project, I mean, if you watch every show one by one, it's it's always different. You know, all the matches can be always different. And you can like one kind of matches and then you can back to regular kind of action. Mm. Then you have like a special one. They run pay-per-views. Um, what can I say? I think in Europe, nobody does that. Wow. You get all the, like some of the promotion in England are quite big, but they don't have that much shows. Yeah. Um, they're in like yeah. once a once a month, maybe twice a month. Okay, they're doing like big crowd, but they don't have storyline. They don't have they don't have their own, you know, worker. They use people from the outside. So if you take a look at the whole product, WXW is top one. Wow. Because yeah, I, I, you know, there's so many wrestling organizations that exist and yet Obviously, WXW is the one sticking up from the bunch because they have the biggest in Europe and Germany in general. But let's talk about you were involved with the WWE for a little bit, the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016. What's the process of being even involved with the Cruiserweight Classic? Are there tryouts? Did someone reach out to you? What was the process for you? First, I got the tryout. It comes out of nowhere because I'm from France. I came from a a village of 100 people. Um, I'm not that big, not that tall. Uh, I was not that big. I'm I'm bigger now, but I was like maybe 85 kilo when I had done my tryout. So around like 180 pounds, something like that. And like out of nowhere, I got a mail from um, WWE asking me if I want to come to London and do a tryout. So I went to the tryout done um, um, bodybuilder training and diet. So I was like very lean mm. with veins mm-hmm. and everything, but very like I, I cut cut down like maybe 10 pounds, something like that, the 10 lips maybe. And then like I look small and they don't really 
you know, take a look at my work because I was maybe too small for them. Mm -hmm. A year later, they asked me to come back. So I went back, but I was like, hey, no diets. Last time I was too skinny, too skinny for them. I was like, no, 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 no. This time I want them to see me. And I, I went there like 225 pounds, like the way I'm, I, I, I used to be. Uh, um, and it, it was completely different. Like they look at me, they, they, they and I've, I've done exactly the same. Like the way I wrestled didn't change in a year. Like it was, I moved the same way. I threw punches the same way. I bumped the same way. But because I look a little bit different, the way they look at me was different. End of the trial, um, Kenyon, who was, you know, at the head of the, the, the trial at this moment, told me I would be a part of the WWE family one day. Um, and then I get back home. No news for almost a year. Wow. And yeah. again, out of nowhere, uh, Tristan, can you be under 205 for June? I was at 225. And I'm like, yes, easy, of course. And then they explained to me, like, okay, in June, we're going to run um, the Cruiserweight Classic. Uh, we're going to bring you to the US to do a tournament with 32 of the best Cruiserweight in the world. Would you be a, a part of it? And you know, like for me, it was like, yes, of course. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm from the middle of nowhere in France, like a very, very small village. And when I start Russell, I just wanted to be a wrestler. You know, travel a little bit, um, try to wrestle with as much, you know, talented guy as possible. And in my mind, it was like, no, no way, I, I end up in WWE. Like, no way. And then, like, out of nowhere, can you do want to be a part of the, the crew classic, like, 32 of the best crew weight in the world, and Ibushi, Zach Sabre Jr., like, so many, so many talented guys. So I was, like, very, very excited about it. That's amazing. Because <laughs> you always hear about, you know, people having a dream to be in the WWE, and obviously you were able to do that, and you were in the Cruiserweight Classic in 2016. So... When you're getting paired up for matches and things like that, is there like a dream scenario of who you wanted to wrestle first? Or was that just like, they just tossed you in and you're like, hey, this is what you're doing. This is what you want me to do. Shut up, be quiet, do what we want you to do. Oh, if I had the, the possibility to choose, I would have wrestled with uh, Ibushi. Yeah. Big, big fan. Uh, but I got Cedric, Cedric Alexander and it was already good. Like I was already happy with that. Like is is a fantastic wrestler. Um, and for the match, they didn't tell us anything. Like they just pair us and say, okay, do what you do what you do what you want. Wow. We got we got, we got somebody who, who, who take care of the match. Uh, we build up the match with Cedric. We don't have that much time, like five minutes something. So we bring the Heidi to the judge about Adam Pierce. Very nice guy. Um, I knew him before that when I was uh, in LA like maybe four years before the Cruiserweight Classic something like that mm -hmm. very nice guy he's always nice with me like very kind very kind man like for real like one of the the kindest men I, I, I met in wrestling world um, we bring Heidi and it was like yeah perfect thank you like I bring the idea of not being as athletics as, you know, all the guys who can do a double 415 or mm -hmm. a double moonsault. And I told him, I can do a moonsault, but the fact is there is a guy who's going to do a double one or maybe a Spanish fly from the top. Or So can I be like the guy who tried to take control of the cruiserweight and make this stay on the ground, mm -hmm. like being a European wrestling style and it was like let's go for it it's gonna be different and and people are gonna gonna like it and gonna remember it and that's why i do like we build up all the match with me trying to keep cedric on the ground and me very 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 best you know like very very on the ground very like um, yeah. almost like amateur wrestling kind of and um like he was happy with it. like he and we didn't like, we got three days with Cedric to build up the match and everything. We built up in, like, maybe 20 minutes. 
and we just like talk about different stuff and we get to the ring and it was like it clicked perfectly like some people like um Tommy Hen, for example very first time I wrestled him perfect match uh Gresham uh Cheesher Cheesher is my favorite opponent right now in in Europe we don't have to talk we just we have been able to read each other and we have got like a, an hour match, uh, uh, a 16 minute Iron Man match. First for the boss of us, very first time we've done that kind of matches. We build up some, some spot and some like cue and everything. And then went to the match, do all the stuff that we playing and then ask Tassilo the ref, how long do we have? Oh, 30 minutes left. <laughs> 30 minutes left on the fly. Completely on the fly. Just feeling the emotion of the people, uh, feeding him. He feed me. Uh, we talk. We fight. We brawl. And we, we've no... I fucked up. We've no botch. You know? Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like... We haven't trained together. We just like uh, maybe have like two matches before that. So sometime when you wrestle with somebody, it's just like magical. If I can say it. Mm-hmm. And it was the same mm-hmm. with Cedric. Like we have just planned some stuff and then we just work. That's all. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I, sometimes you can tell there's magic in the ring and sometimes you can tell that someone's definitely not connecting. But these matches in the Cruiserweight Classic, I didn't see one bad match the entire tournament as well. Was there ever discussion? Because obviously after the Cruiserweight Classics are over, they decide to have a Cruiserweight division. Was there ever discussion of you joining that group? When I left the Cruiserweight Classic, um somebody shake my hands somebody important at this moment shake my hands and told me to check my mail because i will be back soon nothing nothing and i'm not i'm not used to reach people out you know i never contacting people uh-huh. it's, it's not where i used to be and like i was just waiting 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 and until I met uh, Christian yep. from Edge and Christian, he was on a show in Paris uh, doing like um, um, signature. Auto- mm-hmm. auto- yeah, si- yeah, signings. Yeah. Yeah, signings. And he watched my match, left his spots, went to the ring and hugged me like, out of nowhere. So I'm start crying because big fan of Christian. Yeah. Like for me in the ring, like Edge is more charismatic. But Christian is like 10 times better. For me, it's like this guy cannot have a bad match. True. Like everything he's, he's doing is like very like logical. Like he is very good in wrestling. Like top guy ever. So he came, hugged me. And then we, we went backstage and he gave me like good feedbacks. And he told me to contact WWE again because there is, for him, there is no way that I was not working for them already. So I contacted the WDB again and it was, yeah, we're waiting for your mail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it was good news. Everything was always like positive when we talk. But I mean, I've done NXT UK after that for like um, a two taping mm-hmm. and then nothing more. But, you know, I think it's more a question of time or timing or project or you know what they're looking at this moment and maybe i'll always miss timing the moment i don't know but i'm really happy with all the opportunity i got there and you know like i'm all, i'm always busy like i'm working in germany almost right. every weekend england uh i've been to qatar uh indonesia uh, usa canada so okay it's now wwe but this is what I dream about when I was a kid, traveling the world and wrestle everywhere. So you're doing cool. it. Yeah, you're, you're doing it. 
So with NXT Europe opening up in the next maybe year, I have a feeling that to open up that mailbox is going to be a letter saying we need you now because, again, you are the WDXW Unified Champion in Germany, bringing up how it's the biggest company in Europe, NXT Europe. There's no way that they're not watching. I feel like sometimes they're standoffish and they're just like watching and waiting. And once it's time, NXT Europe opens up. I feel like all these companies who have big talent like yourself are going to be plucked and brought in to build this brand because without talent from Europe, what what are we doing here? Like NXT UK started turning into like different talents from across the world. Well, it's called NXT UK, not NXT uh, you know Europe or global. Europe. You know, global, uh, yeah. um, it wasn't that. So with NXT Europe opening up. You know, obviously, if you get the phone call, are you going to take that opportunity? Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, a lot of people telling me that, yes, you're going to be NXT Europe. And I say, you know, like, I'm not the one in control. Right. I'm 37. Okay, I'm the WXW champion. And I've been doing this for quite a long time. And I already work everywhere in Europe. But that doesn't mean they're going to reach me out. Maybe they're looking for younger people. Maybe they're looking for maybe only one friend guy. And, you know, they already have like, like um, ML, you know, the French girls. Yep. So maybe they only need like one guy from France. And why, maybe it's going to be her. I don't know. I, I don't I don't blame anything. Like if they come up to me, I will, I will say yes, of course. Because like contract, that means full-time wrestling. That means perfect life. You know, like the gold. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you get, you don't want to be sitting there looking at your phone all day, be like, oh, wait, where are they calling me? Why aren't they calling me? Is my phone on? Is it not on? I've had those, I've had issues like that in my own life of uh, waiting for interviews, being like, where? Are they, they haven't responded. They haven't responded. Why haven't they responded? They hate me. They, they don't, I'm not good. Ah! Oh, they responded. Okay, good. Uh, so, yes, I 100% understand. But again, I think. You as the unified champion for WXW is outstanding. That business is growing every single day. And I hope everyone goes. I found it on YouTube. So if anyone wants to go check it out again, Westside Extreme Wrestling with an X. It's on YouTube. WXW. The production value is outstanding. But I have had a great time sitting here talking to you about Cruiserweight Classic, WXW, NXT Europe, the future. Is so damn bright for you, and I cannot wait for Tristan Archer to take over the world one more time. But I really appreciate you being here on 10 Count because it was an honor talking to you about your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations. But I've been Steve Fall. He's been Tristan Archer. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Au revoir. Salut.